Good morning and welcome to United Christian Church of Country Club Hills, Illinois. I'm Pamela Kennebrew and we welcome you to our online worship service for today, Sunday, January 31st, 2021. If you are visiting with us online, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to share and worship with you. Today's scripture reading is Psalms 100 verses 4 through 5. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and understanding of his word. Amen. Now will you please pray with me? Blessed Lord, we worship you and thank you for your grace. It is through you that we gather in your presence today. Thank you for manifesting your presence here and accept our thanks in Jesus' name. According to your word, all good and perfect things come from your throne above. Give us what we need to follow you and walk with you. Give us the power to do all things in your name. Through Christ who strengthens us, we ask that you always abide with us. Accept our praises and worship so that we may return home refreshed to sing your praises. Amen. I wish everyone a blessed day as we continue with our worship service. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight my
Hello everyone, it's me, Chuck, from Chuck Knows Church. I am back and I'm teaming up with See All The People to share simple ideas that you, your family, or your church can do to help your community during this time of crisis. There are things we can do. Some of you probably remember this thing. Tethered to a wall or sitting on a desk. No. Now, is it ringing any bells for you? Huh? What? Mom, get off the phone! I'm trying to talk to my girlfriend! <laughs> Something like that? Anyway. Uh, today, most of us have one of these stuck in our pocket. One of these, actually, <laughs> right? Now, this phone still serves as a great way to connect. So, why not check in uh, on someone from your church or someone you know in the community who just needs a reminder that you're thinking about them. Better yet, get out the church directory and make sure everyone is okay. Oh, Stella, are you okay? Great. Roger, are you okay? Great. Keith, are you okay? Great. Yeah, no, I already, I already checked on Stella. She's great. See, uh-huh. Maybe, uh, maybe create a phone tag list, checking periodically to make sure that they don't need anything. There's even smartphone apps to help you do that. Give it a Google. What you do will help keep us all connected in a time when that simple phone call might just make somebody's day. Check out. I have to, to take this. Oh, and this. Huh? Yeah, no, I told you, I already talked to Stella. Members of the Christian family, steal your thoughts. Quiet your minds as we come to the Lord and bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, our Lord and Savior, creator of all things, we humbly come before you to praise you and to give you thanks. It is you, O Lord, who have set the stars in the heavens. It is you who gives life and breath to everything that we see. It is you who guides and protects us and provides us with all that we need and more than we deserve. O oh Lord, it is you who brings us through the storms of life and gives us hope. For great is the Lord and most worthy of our praise. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your love and healing. We thank you for your forgiveness and the gift of salvation. We thank you, Lord, for this day and the opportunity to serve. We pray that we remember to give thanks in all circumstances. Father, we ask you for your help, for we know we are weak. We abuse this world and the gifts you have given us and mistreat our fellow man. We squander our resources and we fill our time with greed and arrogance. Father, we ask you to remove from us jealousy useless pride and hate. We ask you to heal our nation and the world of the COVID-19 pandemic. We ask you to eliminate the scourge of racism that permeates our lives. We ask you to protect all those who are in need and provide comfort to those who are suffering and are in pain. Heal their bodies. Give hope to those who are distressed, to those who experience loss and struggle with the everyday challenges of this world. We ask you to enrich our lives with joy through study and increase our faith. We pray that everything that we do is in honor and glory to you. We lift these prayers, O oh Lord, to you of our concerns and our praise. In the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, amen. everyone, it's me, Chuck, from Chuck Knows Church with another simple idea you can do during these strange times. Remember, there are things we can do. In moments of crisis, we quickly realize how interconnected we are. As followers of Jesus, we are invited to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. How can we think of and better serve our neighbors? Now, one simple way might be whenever you make a grocery run, let two or three neighbors or shut-ins know, especially those who are in the higher risk categories. Ask if you can pick something up for them. 
Make sure you take all the precautions, hand sanitizer in the car, the grocery cart, and remind your neighbors as you deliver the items to wipe them down once received. But take it a step further. Upon delivery, ask, is there any way I can be praying for you and your family? Find small ways that you can love and serve your neighbor in these difficult times. Sunday boys and girls and welcome to another children's moment with Miss Sharice. As always, I am excited to be here every Sunday with you all and I'm so happy that you take the time out to come and see me so that we can learn about Jesus Christ. Today we are going to be talking about is Jesus in control of your life boys and girls. Does Jesus have full control of your life? So go ahead and grab your Bibles and we are going to Mark 1 verses 22 through 28. That's Mark 1, verses 22 through 28. And it reads, The people there were amazed at his teaching. He did not teach like their teachers of the law. He taught like a person who had authority. While he was in the synagogue, a man was there who had an evil spirit in him. The man shouted, Jesus of Nazareth, what do you want with us? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, God's holy one. Jesus said strongly, be quiet. Come out of the man. The evil spirit, it made the man shake violently. Then the spirit gave a loud cry and came out of him. The people were amazed. They asked each other, what is happening here? This man is teaching something new, and he teaches with authority. He even gives commandments to evil spirits, and they obey him. And the news about Jesus spread it quickly everywhere in the area of Galilee. So that was Mark 1, verses 22 through 28. So, boys and girls, tell me, do you know what this is? I have two of them. Sure you do. It is a remote control or controller or remote, however you say it. And a remote control is something that every TV has in their homes, right? You have it in your home. When you use a remote control, we use it to watch TV. We use it to turn the volume up and down. We use it to turn the TV on and off. We use it to turn the channels, right? So let's just go over a few buttons that this controller do and what it can do to control the TV from wherever you're sitting in your home. This is my power button. Not only does it turn the TV on, it turns it off. This is my volume. It turns the TV up or down. This here is the channel buttons. It makes the channels change channels, boys and girls, right? This here is the mute button. It quiets the TV. This here I can use to rewind or fast forward something if I have recorded something. And this here in the middle is to make the TV pause or play something, right? So those are all different type of buttons that we have on the remote control. And like I said, I have two of them here. I have my home button that gets me back home. I have the back button to take me back. I have the channel buttons here, up and down, the okay. If you wanna watch something, then I can watch different things here, Netflix and Disney Plus and all that good stuff and rewind. So remotes, they're all different. But they all kind of do the same thing, right? They help control the what? The TV. Very good. That is exactly what it is. So, do you know something else? There are some remote controls that can do much more than just that of what I told you, right? I have seen some remote controls that you can use to put on a DVD player, a CD player, a Blu-ray player, and it makes it go fast, it makes it go slow, it makes it go in slow motion, all of those type of things. And not only does it control the DVD player or the video taping, it can control the TV. And that is something that is called a universal remote. Well, it controls more than one thing in your home that is connected to the TV. Isn't that amazing how a little thing like this, or it can be big like this, or two of these, or one of these, or three of these, can, can, can control 
the TV, the DVD, and make it do all of those things by pressing a button. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing how it has that much control over something, right? So small. So that's just like in our Bible lesson today, Jesus showed people his amazing control of everything around him, right? It was on the Sabbath day, which is a Sunday, right? That's what they call the Sabbath, the day. Jesus went out and he began to teach and start teaching these people and teaching about different things. And they was like, he doesn't teach like regular teachers. He knows what he's doing and he's teaching with authority. He's teaching with power. He's teaching with control, boys and girls. That's what the people were saying, right? So when he went out and he did this teaching, it was a man, just like in our Bible verse, who had a very bad spirit. He was very mean, a very evil spirit that he had. And Jesus spoke to that spirit and he told that spirit to be quiet and to come out of that man he had control and he said that when he spoke those things to the evil spirit to be quiet and to come out the spirit was quiet the spirit came out right it came out of that man jesus commanded to do that and it did just as just as jesus said and it came out of that man and it was quiet the Bible story also tells us, boys and girls, that people were amazed and they were like, wow, like, oh my goodness. And they looked around at each other and they asked each other, like, did you see what I see? Did you see what I see? Did you see what happened? Do you know that he spoke to an evil spirit, something inside of another person? And he made the spirit obey him and come out. And they were saying, that is control. That is power that Jesus had to speak to something, to tell it to come out, right? Jesus can do that. They were just amazed because they had never seen it before. And they knew that that man's life would never be the same. That whatever was inside of him, because Jesus spoke to him and Jesus had control of that spirit, they knew that that man would be better and would never be mean or evil to anyone else because Jesus had spoke to the spirit and told it to be quiet and to come out. So that is just like us boys and girls. Jesus wants control of our life, of your life, of my life too. He wants to be in control of the plans you make. He wants to be in control of the words you say and the things that you do. And he wants to be in control of the places that you go so that he can protect you and cover you and make sure that you're doing the right things just like he gave us in the Bible to do the right things, to obey our parents, to be nice to each other, to love one another, to give to each other. He wants to have that control. Why? Jesus is in control because he loves us no matter what. He's not in control to say, this is mine and I own you and you're going to do what I say. No, that's not it. He wants the best for us. That's why he wants control because Jesus wants the best for you and me, for all of my friends that are watching. Let Jesus have and take control of your life. If we just pray and ask God to take over this prayer and we faithfully give it to him, he will control it. And when he give it back, it will be the best thing that we could ever imagine and think of to have a brighter future, not only for you little ones, but for us adults. We sometimes have a hard time letting go and just allowing Jesus to control and take full control of something because we're such in a rush to get things done and want to have it done our way but if we know boys and girls mothers and fathers sisters and brothers adults that if we give jesus full control of our lives he will meet every need and do everything right for us and it will be the best thing so what i want you to remember on today is Think about that question. 
Is Jesus in control of your life? Do you really give him full control? And if not, say a prayer tonight and allow God to control whatever situations, whatever sicknesses you're going through, whatever issues you're going through, whatever it is. Even if it's something great, allow Jesus to control it because it will be the best thing for you and for me. Let us pray. Dear God, we just thank you and we want to allow Jesus to take full control of our lives. Thank you even in the times that we want to take control. You still love us and you never leave us. We know that you want the best for us and we want the best for ourselves. So we ask that you take over and have your way with us, God. We thank you for this time that we get to spend together. In Jesus' name we say, amen. Amen, boys and girls. Allow Jesus to be in control on today. See you next Sunday. Bye-bye. and my sisters it's time for the word of God for the people of God you will find me in the 118th Psalm I'm just going to read one verse and the verse is going to be verse number 24 and it reads as follows this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I highlighted one verse, but we will be going throughout the entire 118th Psalm. So will you please pray with me as I go to the throne of grace and mercy. 
And dear creator God, it is your humble servant coming once again. God, have your way with me. God, guide my mind. God, my heart. God, my tongue. As I attempt to bring your truth to these, your children, my brothers and my sisters. <clears throat> God, if there is anything that's not of you, please remove it. God, use me as you see fit. Use me as an ambassador of yours. And God, have this word go forth and penetrate someone's mind, someone's heart, and someone's spirit. Have someone who has not accepted you confess their faith on this day and become part of the believers. And God, for those of us who have accepted you, have this word embolden us to go forth into this dark world and help someone who has not received you to see the truth, to see the way, to see the life, and accept you as their personal Lord and Savior. God, have your way. God, I pray this prayer in your Son, our Savior's name, Jesus Christ, and we say together, Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. When we look at the 118th Psalm, the psalmist begins, I like to say, with the end in the beginning. And the psalmist challenges individuals by saying this, Go forth, let the world know that the Lord is good and His mercy. His love endures forever. He challenges the people of Israel, the chosen people, to go forth and tell everyone that the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. He then tells the house of Aaron, the priests, to go forth. And say to the world that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Finally, he says, all those who fear the Lord, who reverence the Lord, go forth and tell the world, the Lord, he is good and his mercy endures forever. I'm challenging each and every one of you, the chosen people, God's children, the priests, whether you are ordained, commissioned, or you're part of the body of believers, part of the royal priesthood, go forth, tell the world. To push because the Lord is good and his mercy, his love endures forever. For all those who reverence the Lord, go forth and tell the world that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. If there's ever a time that the world needs a push, and we need to push them and let them know that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. 
Now is that time. You see, the psalmist says, I'm encouraging you to go forth and tell people about the Lord's love and how good it is. The psalmist says, you see, when I was distressed, I did some things. I pushed. First thing the psalmist said he did was, I cried out to the Lord when I was in distress. You see, sometimes we have to fall on our knees, go to God in prayer and in meditation. That's the first thing. Pray until something happens. Push. You see, prayer brings us back into that spacious place, as the Word of God says. Prayer brings us back into proper position, right relationships, when we are distressed. When we are distressed, we're not in line with God. Now, I need for you to understand this. There's a difference between being stressed and being in distress. You see, we oftentimes are going to be in stressful situations. That's not the issue. The issue is, how do we respond in stressful situations. Do we handle it like we should or are we going to be distressed? See, when we're not in right relationships, we begin to fear. When we're not in a line, in right relationship, in our proper position with God. Same thing with Adam and Eve back in the garden. When they fell out of right relationship. And God asked. Why are you? And Adam said. I was afraid. I was hot. He was distressed. But if we pray. And we're placed back in proper position. Even though we may be faced with stress. All around us. We will not be in distress. You see, if we're in right relationship with God and God is love, the word of God says perfect love drives out fear. So we must be intentional and push, pray until something happens and pray until we get back in right relationship with God. Pray until something happens. That's point number one. Point number two is proclaim the goodness of God. See, when we are in right relationship with God, we begin to view things not as the world views it, but as God views it. When we are in right relationship with God, we can then begin to see all the God's blessings. And not the one thing that's not working out right for us. Unfortunately, that's how we are. Once again, go back to the garden. You had all this fruit and vegetation that you could eat from. And Adam and Eve chose the one thing God said not to do. Oftentimes we want to point the finger at Adam and Eve. But we have fallen just like them. We have so many blessings, abundant blessings all around us. But we tend to focus on the one thing that's not going right. You see, we were blessed on this day. 
when we woke up and our eyes flung open. But then we say, oh, my back is hurting. Then we say, oh, I did not get all my sleep out. Or did, did we praise and proclaim the word of God? Did we say, God, you're good and your mercy endures forever? See, our beds could have been our cooling boards, but thank God it wasn't. We could have been sleeping out in the snowstorm with no roof over our head, but the Lord's love. The Lord is good, and his mercy, his love, endures forever. Are we complaining because we don't have the boots or the shoes that we want, but we have our rubber boots in the corner? Are we proclaiming the goodness of God? God is our provider. We may not have everything we want, but we have everything that we need. Why? Because the Lord is good and his love endures forever. The Lord's right hand, as the psalmist says, has protected us. Our God has put a shield and a hedge of protection all around us. He's protected us from dangers seen and unseen. Why? Because the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. The Lord has kept us from death and harm. The Lord has and continues to be a healer. If we're honest with ourselves, we should have been dead and gone a long time ago. I reflect back during this week, and I remember that 11 years ago, I should have been laid to rest. But the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. I can't help but thank God for allowing me to see my children graduate, become young adults. It didn't have to be that way, but the Lord's love towards me is so good, and the love of God towards you is so good. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. We must go tell it on the mountain. The goodness of God. As the word says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. God is true to his word. And family, if we do not go out into the world and proclaim God's love during these times, who will? We cannot let the rocks cry for us. God has called us this season to push, to pray until something happens, and then proclaim God's love, God's goodness, until something happens. We are God's chosen people. We are God's priesthood. We're the ones who understand and revere God. God is calling us for this time. We just cannot sit back behind our screens, televisions, hoping, waiting to go back into a build. We must go out into the highways and byways and share the goodness of God. God has been too good for us. Too good. To us, for us to sit back on our hands. See, 
I said before, God will lead us into some stressful situations. Reverend Biden, why is that? I don't want to be in a stressful situation. I don't want to be in this time of chaos and controversy. I don't want to be involved in these dark times. I just want it to blow over. God says, I'm the light of the world. We are God's ambassadors. And so God sometimes will allow us to go into dark places so we can be the light of hope. So someone can see God through us. See, when we are in dark times, it's not about us. It's about someone else and trying to point someone else to God. If we want to be God's servant, we have to trust and believe God that even though I'm in the valley of the shadow of death, God is with us. And even though I'm in a stressful situation, I'm not in de-stress because I know God is with me. Even though I'm headed to a high situation like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, even though I'm in the fiery furnace, God is with me. I can still praise God in the face of stressful times and hard times. Because I know God's word is true. I'm not going to trust the word of man. I'm not going to trust the word of governments. I'm not going to trust the word of nations. I'm only going to trust the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one and only God. After I pray until something happens, after I push and proclaim the goodness of God until something happens, I am then going to praise God until something happens. I'm praise God in the good times and the bad times. I'm going to praise God in the daytimes and the night times. I'm going to praise God in and out the fire. Why? I'm going to be intentional because this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's the attitude that we have to have. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice. You see, God gives us a choice. Who are you going to serve on this day? Are you going to serve men and believe in man's word? Or are you going to serve God and believe in God's word? See, men didn't make this day. We often look to man as being our source, a source of income, a source of protection, a source of healing. But we have to understand that man is not our source. Man is just a resource, a resource, a medical resource, a legal resource, a political resource resource. But our source is found in the one and only God. And for that, I'm going to praise him on this day. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God's word, like I said, is true. I'm not fearing anyone. I'm not fearing any situation. I'm going to push until something happens. I'm going to pray until something happens. 
I'm going to proclaim the goodness of God until something happens. And I'm going to praise him each and every day, all day long. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Reverend, that sounds good. But I've lost a loved one. God's word says, if we die in Christ's likeness, we too shall be raised in the likeness of Christ. Though this physical body is gone, I will have everlasting life with God. So even in the midst of tears and death, I will rejoice and be glad in it because my loved one was in right relationship with God. See, that's why we have to obey God's command and say, Go ye therefore into all the world and make disciples of men and women, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. And lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of time. You see, we all are going to taste death. But are we going to be in right relationship? Will we have spent our years as an ambassador, as a servant of God, sharing the good news of God? Will people be able to look at us in times of struggle, in times of controversy and chaos and say through it all that person is still pushing forward praying proclaiming the good news and praising their God see the world is looking for an answer and I'm here to tell you that an answer would not be found in the president in a country, in a nation. But that answer will be found in God and God alone. So if you will, take time and pray with me again. God, we thank you for this word. God, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your love. God, you are love. And God, we are going to be careful and intentional to continue to push until something happens. We're going to continue to pray, proclaim, and praise you until something happens. God, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice who have not accepted you as a personal Lord and Savior, if they will accept you with all their heart and mind and soul, we know that you are true to your word, and they are now part of the body of believers. God, thank you for this word. God, have it to go forth. And God, have it to be true and change the world and point back towards you. And God, we love you. God, we thank you. And God, I pray this prayer in your son, I save his name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Family, remember, God loves you, and so do I. Be safe. Be blessed. Take care, and remember, always, Keep the faith. Love you.
worship you as we eat this bread we honor you and we offer you our lives as you have offered yours for us we remember It is time for our communion. At United Christian, we have communion every Sunday. It is an open communion. If you believe that Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross and rose on the third day, you are welcome to join us. It doesn't matter who you are, where you have been, or what you have done. You are welcome. After praying, we will partake of our communion. Heavenly Father, we come again to this time to remember your Son, Jesus, who gave his life for us. Thank you for his birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. Be with us now as we remember. Be with us now. Amen. When Jesus was with his disciples in the upper room, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and said, Take this, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Then he took the cup, blessed it, and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. As often as you drink it, remember me. Let us drink together. Let us thank our Father for this time together. May we remember Jesus' commandment to love one another. In his name, amen. Hi United, I'm Cinnamon Poole and you're watching UCC TV. Please join us for Bible study this Wednesday, February 3rd from six o'clock until 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Be sure to look for your emailed invitation and join us this Wednesday. There will be a drive through communion on Saturday, February 13th from 12 noon until 2 p.m. Please come to pick up your communion for the next few weeks and you will receive your Ash Wednesday pack as well. Also, Ash Wednesday service will be held on Wednesday, February 17th at 6.30 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Be sure to join us and invite your family and friends. And last but not least, don't forget how important it is to give. You can give through our two convenient mobile giving apps, Give Plus or Givelify. You can give through our website at www.uccdoc.com or you can mail your offering to United Christian Church at 4351 West 180th Street, Country Club Hills, Illinois, 60478. Continue to stay safe and God bless you all. This is Cinnamon Poole signing off for UCC-TV.